Welcome back to my channel, everyone. I am so happy that you are here. I hope this finds you all well, healthy, and happy. <laughs> so as many of you know, this has not been a super good week for me. Earlier in the week, I was admitted into the hospital. I had to have an emergency surgery, and I am on the mend, and I am recovering, but because of circumstances, I was unable to get a brand new video filmed for y'all this week. So I thought it would be fun to just put together a video for y'all that was just filled with some of my favorite crafts that I have done over the years. I hope you guys really enjoy this. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's kick off our projects today with something very, very simple. All you will need for this is some scrapbook paper, a frame of choice, and an artificial flower of choice. So we're going to start out by Mod Podging our scrapbook paper to the glass part of this frame. And I am Mod Podging this to the front side, which I guess with glass, it doesn't really matter. There's not really a front and a back. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and cover this entire thing, making sure to carefully get the glue all the way to the edges so that we don't have any lifting from our scrapbook paper. Next, I will carefully position our scrapbook paper into place. This Mod Podge does have a little bit of forgiveness to it, so if you get it crooked, you've got a little bit of time to kind of straighten it out a little. And if you have a brayer, I highly recommend using a brayer to flatten this out. However, I don't have one yet. I still haven't gone and got myself one. So I just use my hands to press it. The next thing I'm going to do, because I didn't have the backing for this picture frame, I'm just going to go ahead and glue my glass right into place. Now we're going to go ahead and take our artificial flower. You can use any flower here that you so choose because after all, this is your piece to customize to fit your needs. But I am just using a daisy here that I got at Hobby Lobby and I love green and it's my favorite color. So I'm going to go ahead and use a green one for this. And then I take another stem that's just got kind of some sweet, delicate little leaves on it and that's going to be the backing. I will just hot glue the stem down in place and then to the top of this stem, I will hot glue our flower into place. And to finish this off, we are going to add just a simple little finger bow to the bottom of our stem. Y'all, I think this is so sweet. It's such a simple project. It works up in like 30 minutes and it would make such a sweet Mother's Day gift, especially since Mother's Day is just around the corner. Okay, this next project is going to be so fun, y'all. This is one of my favorite projects from this entire compilation. So we're going to just take some glass mason jars and you can use any jar of your choosing here. And then I am going to clean these with some rubbing alcohol really, really well, just to make sure that there is nothing left on these glass jars that will prevent our paint from sticking because we are going to paint these in just a few moments. But before we get to painting our jars, let's play with some air dry clay for a few minutes. I have these cute little molds and I thought it would be so much fun to 
create some air dry clay molds that we can attach to the front of our jar. So this first one is just this little hen. I was actually thinking about my mother when I made this because she loves roosters and hens and whatnot. So I think I might end up giving these to her filled with her favorite candy or something. So hopefully she's not watching and this will still be a surprise for her. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and press this air dry clay into our mold and I do press it in really well and if it gets a little dry on you, you can dip your fingers in some water to kind of help mold and um, move the clay a little bit better. After playing with epoxy a couple of weeks ago, I think I've decided that I like the epoxy far better than the air dry clay for two reasons. It's super fast and there's no wait time and it hardens a lot harder. Like it, the air dry clay I feel like still has a little bit of softness to it even after it has set up and it does take this air dry clay about 24 hours to completely harden. It's also a little bit fiddly to remove from the mold, whereas the epoxy just pops right out of the mold. So that's one of the reasons I think I like epoxy. I like epoxy better. However, you do get a little bit different texture with the um, clay versus the epoxy. To attach these clay molds to our glass jars, I'm going to use some tight bond wood glue. You do want to make sure that you are using the waterproof glue because there is a lot of moisture in this clay and as the clay starts to dry, if the glue isn't waterproof, it will not stay adhered to your surface. And I am gluing these to our glass jars while the clay mold is still wet. And the reason that I do this is while it's wet, it's going to dry attached to our glass jar, which means that it will fully form to the glass jar versus letting it air dry before attaching it. Because if you air dry it before attaching, it's not going to fully form to the jar. So you might have some strange gaps and things and it won't, it may not bend and mold to the jar the way you want it to. So that's why I attach it wet. Next, we're going to go ahead and start painting our jars. And I'm first going to put two coats of white, Waverly white chalk paint on our jars before adding the colored paint. I did forget to mention that you don't actually want to start painting these until your air dry clay is fully set up. So wait about 24 hours before you start painting these. Of course, with the magic of editing, it looks like I just jumped right in and started painting, but I didn't. I actually let that air dry clay dry overnight before I painted. So like I said, I'm going to add two coats of white Waverly chalk paint to these jars and then I'm going to come in with the color fawn and go over these jars with just one coat of the fawn. really love this color fawn y'all it has a, a green tinge to it and it's just so earthy I don't know there's just something about this color that I really love and this is also a Waverly brand chalk paint but saying that can be a mouthful sometimes saying that Waverly especially when you're saying white Waverly chalk paint <laughs> That could be a real tongue twister. So anyway, it only takes one coat of this fawn color to cover this because we already had that you know base coat underneath. And another thing that I want to mention is make sure you paint the bottoms of your jars because it just gives it that finished professional look. 
Now that our paint is completely dry, we're going to go over this with some antiquing glaze. And I'm first going to use white antiquing glaze, and then I go over it a little bit with just some of that brown antiquing glaze. And I brush it on with my stippling brush in kind of a stippling motion to make sure I get down in all the grooves and the details of the um, uh, air dried clay and then I kind of brush it off a little bit and I repeat this two or three times until I get the desired look. Since we're already playing with clay, I decided to go ahead and make a couple more projects with our clay mold, our air dry clay. And for these ones, I'm using some cute butterfly molds and a bumblebee mold and a dragonfly and maybe even some flowers here for this project. And we are just going to glue these to these darling little miniature terracotta pots. I found these terracotta pots at Walmart and y'all, these are so expensive. I think these pots were less than 50 cents, I'm pretty sure, a, a pot. So I'm just going to do the same exact process as our first air dry clay. You press it into the mold very, very firmly. And then if you need to, you can take the, the flat side of a butter knife and kind of scrape it so that it you don't get any excess clay because you don't want a bunch of excess clay on the back when you release it from the mold. Then we'll just go ahead and continue gluing these to our pots before moving on to painting. I got all these sweet little molds um, attached to the tops of the terracotta pots I decided they're gonna need a tray to sit in so we are going to just form a tray using our air dry clay I don't really have a pattern for this I kind of just roll it out and then I measure it to the size of my pots do some trimming and then just kind of scallop all of the edges to create a tray of sorts this actually turns out so cute and I really, really love it. I hope you guys like this too. To make sure that I'm getting my edges completely straight, I do use a ruler and my um, X-Acto knife here to cut the clay. You could use a butter knife to cut this too, or a steak knife, just anything that's really, really sharp and not too jaggedy because it will leave jaggedy marks in your clay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and shape this by turning up the edges and then kind of scallop up, scallop, <laughs> oh my goodness, my words, all right, and just putting a scallop on these similar like you would do to a pie crust and again if your clay starts to get a little dry on you you can dip your fingers into some water but don't get your fingers soaking soaking wet you want to just dip them lightly and this will help you kind of mold and shape the clay
Now that our um, clay molds have completely and totally set up, we can move on to painting our clay pots. And I am using the color Celery. This is also a Waverly chalk paint. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and give these one coat. It really did only require one coat. I'm not sure what it is about the terracotta, but the paint sits on top of it very nicely. It doesn't actually absorb the paint, so it really did only require one coat of paint. Then I will let that paint dry very well. And after it dried, I decided that these needed a little extra something something. So I'm just going to tape off the bottom part of this pot because I decided we're gonna to I decided to go ahead and tape the rim with an accent color. And the accent color that I am using for the rim of these is that fawn chalk paint by Waverly. Okay, y'all, I really, really love how these turned out. The accent color on the top rim of these just adds so much to the pot, giving it just a lot of texture and dimension. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go over all of our little clay molds here with some antiquing wax and just kind of give this a little tiny bit of distressing and then we will move on to our next step. Don't these just look so cute? I just love them. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and fill these up with some just very simple floral picks. I do add a little bit of floral foam to the bottom of each one of the pots. And then I just got these lavender picks at Walmart. These were really inexpensive as well. I love how these turned out, y'all. What do you guys think? We are just on a roll here with our little <laughs> clay mold. So to this bucket, I decided it would be really fun to add a dragonfly to this one. So it's the same exact process, just using that tight bond waterproof wood glue to attach it to the bucket. Then I'm going to set this aside and let that air dry clay air dry clay dry overnight. After the clay has completely set up, I'm going to add a sweet little border of beads across the top of this. And I found these half beads um, on Amazon, I believe, and I will try to have them linked in the description box for y'all. And I'm just using some hot glue to attach them to the bucket and I will go all around the top perimeter of this cute little tin bucket. This is looking so cute so far. I'm just loving it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tape off our handles here because we're gonna give just the bucket part of this um, 
a paint, a coat of paint. Gosh, sorry, y'all. My words. I think I have surgery brain going on, and my, I'm not. My brain is not recalling my words very quickly here. So I apologize for all the stuttering. Please bear with me. All right. Anyway, so I'm taping off the handles because I don't want to get paint on our handles. I'm not going to paint the handles, just the bucket part, and I'm going to just use some white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some white chalk paint to cover this entire bucket. <laughs> are going to fill this bucket with some florals I did decide to just paint part of the way down on the inside just in case you do see it through some of the florals but I do only go about a quarter of the way down on the inside of this bucket with the paint to any kind of creative mind. I painted the white on this bucket and decided I did not like it at all. So I go over the entire thing with this chalk paint in the color celery. And I end up liking it so, so, so much better. And after the um, celery chalk paint is completely dry, I will do some antique wax over the top of our clay mold. like how this antiquing wax just adds a lot of dimension and depth to our clay molds and on this one I put some of the white 
glaze over the top of the mold but then behind the mold I'm using some of this just antiquing glaze and then I kind of wipe it off so that you just see a little bit of it peeking out from behind our little dragonfly here and I really like how this turned out and after I finish with the antiquing glaze I do give this bucket a little bit of distressing just by sanding it in a few places and then dry brushing on some more of that antiquing glaze kind of all around the perimeter of our bucket. And to finish off this project, we are going to add some floral stems to our bucket. I start by adding some floral foam to the bottom of the pail, and then I just sort of go around the outer perimeter and add in a little bit of greenery to act as the base of this particular um, uh, floral arrangement or greenery arrangement. Then I will just come in with a variety of different little wildflower picks that I found. Some of them came from Walmart, some of them came from Hobby Lobby, and some of them came from Michaels. So just get creative with this project and have fun with it. I am just loving how this piece is turning out, y'all. It just has that fun, whimsical, wildflower feel to it. Okay, y'all, we're gonna get a little wild and crazy with our air dry clay here. We're gonna create something that is completely and totally out of the ordinary. We're going to make um, a clay pocket that's going to be in the shape of an envelope. And I am using a pattern here and I will provide a link, for, a link to that pattern for y'all down in the description box. So I start by just rolling this clay out fairly thin and then I will place my pattern over the top of the clay and cut around it with an exact knife and to get a nice clean edge on this you do want to use a knife that is fairly sharp and doesn't have any jaggedy edges on it It just occurred to me that I have not even once mentioned where I got my air dry clay and we've made a whole bunch of projects with this with this stuff. So I did buy this one on Amazon. You can purchase this air dry clay at almost all craft stores. I've seen it at Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, but I will have a description um, 
why do I keep saying that? I will have a link in the description box for y'all to um, where I purchased my air dry clay from. And I really like the brand that I'm using here. I've tried lots of different brands and this one that I'm using today seems to be my favorite so far because it's not quite as dry and it's a lot easy to mold. It's a lot easier to mold and shape. Okay, so I did mess up a little bit here, y'all, because this little V that I am um, scoring into the top of our clay is actually upside down. It's supposed to be the other way, so you'll see in just a moment how I correct that. But when you use this part, um, so for this, this um, part of the mold, you don't wanna actually cut that V all the way out. I'm just making a small score in it so that we just kind of get a grooved line in it that creates the shape and look of an envelope. Now that we have all the components of our envelope cut out, or yeah, cut out, I'm going to go ahead and um, create the pocket part of this envelope. To do that, I'm using a very damp paper towel and I'm placing it in the middle of the back side of our envelope and then we will take the top side and place it over the top of this. And what this is going to do, it's going to keep that pocket shape in our clay because otherwise you'll just have a flat, um, clay mold here and you won't be able to put anything inside the envelope. So this just keeps it puffed up so that when it dries, it will still have that pocket shape. Then I go ahead and just seal the edges by kind of pinching the clay together. And then I will get my fingers just slightly damp and kind of work the clay and smooth it all out to give it that nice finished look. Okay, so y'all, here's where I realized that I put that V upside down, <laughs> so I flipped it the right way and kind of had to start that whole process all over again. But this clay is very forgiving, so if you do make a mistake, it's easy to just kind of peel it apart and kind of start over and reshape it into its um, the, the, your desired shape. 
So now that our clay is completely set up, and I will tell you all that it took about 36 hours for this envelope to completely cure and get 100% set up and hardened. But now that it is hardened, we're gonna go ahead and paint it, and I am just using the color Celery. This is a chalk paint by Waverly. Something to know about the air dry clay is that it, if you're working with a very large piece, it does take a very long time for it to completely harden and set up. I do know that you can put this in the oven, but you have to be very, very careful if you decide to oven dry it because the clay will burn very quickly and you don't want that to happen because it will ruin all of your hard work. So if you do decide to use the oven, you wanna use the lowest temperature you possibly can, put it on a piece of parchment paper and check it every 10 to 15 minutes because like I said, you do not wanna burn this project and this air dry clay will burn easily. Take it from me, I have made that mistake. <laughs> And you do want to seal the um, you do want to seal your clay projects, and so I'm just going to use some Mod Podge to seal this entire thing, and I just cover the whole thing in a pretty liberal coat. I do the front, the back, all the edges, just do the whole thing to seal it really nicely, and then you shouldn't have any problems with your paint fading or any chipping or anything like that. After letting that Mod Podge coat dry thoroughly, we can add some fun embellishments to our cute little pocket envelope here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add in some floral picks, just a variety of different floral picks to kind of give it that whimsical, wild look. I do like to do when I'm creating any kind of a floral piece is use lots and lots and lots of layers. So I do try to put the tallest layers in the back and then go from tallest to shorter shorter as you move forward in the piece. And as you can see, I did I changed my mind a bazillion times as I was doing this floral arrangement. So you'll kind of see me go through that whole process here as I just layer all of the floral stems into place. <laughs> Thank you. 
Y'all, I think this piece turned out absolutely stunning. And I think this would be a super sweet Mother's Day gift. Something you could do with this that would be really fun is you could fill it with the florals, but then in back behind the florals, you could tuck a sweet little letter to your mom in behind. I just think that would be such a sweet Mother's Day gift. And if my kids are watching, hint, hint, hint. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I do think this is a darling little project. And if y'all decide to try this one, let me know all the fun, creative things that you did with yours. <laughs> Right, have we had enough air dry clay projects now? <laughs> I think I have. So let's move on to working with some vinyl and create this cute little sign. So I cut this stencil out on my silhouette cutter and I will have this provided for y'all in the description box as a free downloadable pattern. I just attached it to my wood pieces and then I'm going to stipple all the way around this with some black chalk paint. And when you're doing stencils like this, it is kind of important to pounce your paint in an up and down stippling motion rather than, you know, running over it in a like a back and forth paint motion. This doing the pouncing motion helps prevent getting bleed through underneath your stencil. All right, y'all, this is my absolute favorite part of working with vinyl. I love doing the weeding part. And <laughs> it kind of felt fun, especially with this project, because it's flowers and I was weeding it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and weed up all of my excess vinyl to reveal our final painted stencil. And y'all, I think this turned out absolutely beautiful. I love this and I'm really impressed with my cutter because this particular stencil has a lot of detail in it and my cutter did an amazing job. So if you're interested in what cutter I used to do this, it is a Silhouette Cameo 3. I've had this cutter now for probably five or six years and this thing is my best friend. It's my best crafting friend for sure. I love this thing and I do so many projects with it. I will have one linked in the description box for y'all if you are interested. I did.
Okay, so you may have noticed that when I first applied this, laid this stencil down on my boards, that my boards were way bigger than the image. So after I finished this weeding process, I did take it out to the shop and cut this into a square shape before adding our um, lettering at the bottom. And then we also cut some holes in the top so that we could add a hanger to this. Now that we have our board cut down to size, we can go ahead and um, start stenciling in our letters. And so here I'm just weeding out the parts of our lettering that we don't want to be in our finished, um, finished product. After I get all the unwanted um, parts of this weeded out, I am going to cut it to size and then I do lay some transfer tape over the top of this so I can use the transfer tape to apply it to our wood board here. And then we will go ahead and just start painting this with the exact same method that we used to paint in our bumblebee and flowers. So I'll just use a stippling blush brush with some black chalk paint and use that pouncy stippling motion to to do this so that you get nice clean edges on all of your lettering. Okay, so my boards are not actually attached in the back yet, so don't worry, I'm not actually painting over the top of our bumblebee. It kind of looks like that um, from this camera view, like I just stuck the stencil over our bumblebee, but I'm not actually doing that. This is that bottom board from our sign. And so after I get all of the stenciling done on this, I do take this out to the shop and attach all the pieces from the back with just some vertical boards and then again we will drill some holes in the top so that we can run some jute cord through it to make a hanger at the top of our sign.
Now that our stenciling is done, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up our vinyl. And I don't necessarily wait for the paint to dry when I do this step. Um, I have found that sometimes if I lift up the stencil right away, it lifts a lot easier while the paint is still wet. And then after I lift up this piece, we'll go ahead and weed out all of our parts and that will pretty much finish off this sign. I really think it turned out so, so cute. It'll add such a nice fun element to the spring and summer decor, like for your outdoor decor. Okay, so I did go ahead and attach all of our boards in the back and you will see here in just a moment as I get a closer up look for you how nice and crisp and clean all of our lettering came out and that is why I feel like it's so important to use that pouncing motion when you're using a, st a stencil like this, like the sticky kind of stencils because these letters did come out so crisp and clean and so did our image. There is just no bleed through on this whatsoever. It really impressed me up on those really thin like um, lines going across the top, how well this stencil turned out. project for today is also going to be just a fun whimsical project that you could use for Easter or you can just keep it out in the springtime. Bunnies don't necessarily have to be Easter specific. I kind of think of bunnies as a springtime thing anyway. So you could use this throughout the spring season if you so choose. So we're just going to take uh, just a plain piece of scrap wood that I pulled out of our um, scrap wood pile in the shop and I'm going to trace this bunny image on to the board and I'm using chalk because I painted I stained my board with black stain ahead of times so if you have a dark piece of wood using chalk to tr trace your stencil works really 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 well and I will have this pattern um, linked in the description box down below for y'all Some of y'all might remember back in the 90s when toll painting was such a big thing to do. We all toll painted everything. Do y'all remember that? Or am I just too old? <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of what this project reminds me of. It's just a simple toll painting project, if you will. So after I trace it on, I'm just going to go ahead and paint the entire inside of this with just some white chalk paint. And um, I'm just using a flat brush to do this so that I can get some good coverage. And I did only put one coat of paint on this because I wanted him to look a little bit rustic and I did want some of that stain from underneath on our board to um, kind of show through. And I was also gonna tell y'all, if you do not have you know, a scrap wood pile in your shop like we do, you can find these crafters boards at, I've seen them at Dollar Tree, I know um, Home Depot and Lowe's have them, and sometimes so does Michael's and Hobby Lobby.
that we have our cute little bunny all painted onto our board, I'm going to go ahead and give him some eyes. And I'm just using some half round wooden beads to do this that I am painting with some black chalk paint. After I get his eyes attached and I'm attaching them with some um, hot glue, after his eyes are attached, we'll go ahead and paint in, well, maybe I don't attach his eyes first. Maybe I paint, okay, scratch all of that. <laughs> after I paint the beads, I set them aside to let them dry. And while those are drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint in his little nose and whiskers. <laughs> I decided he needed to have a little bit of distressing so I do take my um, sanding file and kind of just sand over the inside parts of the bunny a little bit to bring up a little more of that stained wood underneath and then I also do some dry brushing over this entire thing with a little bit of black chalk paint and then some antiquing wax and at first it was a little heavy so what I did is went back over the whole thing with some more with some more white chalk paint and I've kind of dry brushed that on as well to sort of dull all of our little antiquing aspects of this cute little guy. After that step, I glued on some whiskers just by using some jute cording, and then I gave him a bow. And I fiddled with this bow for so long, y'all, and the crazy thing is, after fiddling with it, I decided I hated it, and I ended up just adding a simple little jute finger bow to him, which you will see in the final reveal. So, but while you're watching this, I do want to just take a moment to thank each and every one of you so much for being here with me today. And I appreciate all the support and kind words that you've been sending my way. It has been a little bit of a rough week. I had to have an emergency surgery, as most of you know by now, earlier in the week, which is why we're doing this compilation video. So I do want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me today and for sticking with me through all of the craziness of this week. I hope you all have a great week. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye.